Well, good morning. It's great to be with everybody today. I'm one of the two Fisher brothers that you're going to be hearing from. The other is my brother Chris, better known as Shark Man. So, little background. Chris and I decided we would flip a coin to see who would have the honor for running for mayor of the city of Louisville a couple of years ago. Coin toss, I won. Hey, I'm the mayor now, okay? <laughs> now, to be a good mayor, you have to have the heart of a social worker and the head of a chief executive officer. Uh, these are trying times in America right now. And when we see images like this on our TV screens, we know as a country that this is not the America we think we should be and we can do so much better than this. And as a businessman and entrepreneur that just happens to be mayor right now, I look at this through the lens of building a great company, building a great city, it's the same way. We can't have this type of income gap and expect to have a great country. So the question becomes, what are the guiding values and how can you apply what I learned in, in business as an entrepreneur to that of a city as well? So imagine, imagine a city that was flowing with lifelong learning, with health, physical health, mental health, environmental health, and compassion. This is my dream for the city of Louisville, my dream for all cities. People often ask me, where do these values come from? And I was fortunate to be raised in a family where equity and justice mattered. My dad's main value was everybody's the same. Prince or pauper, treat everybody the same. And my mom's main value was, if you can help somebody, help them. Don't ask for anything in return. It's the right thing to do. Now, this is my mom, Mary Lee. You're going to learn from my brother Chris that the world's most famous great white shark is named after Mary Lee. Mary Lee, the great white shark, has 80,000 Twitter followers. <laughs> my mom has 13 grandchildren and two grand sharks. Okay? <laughs> Now let's go back to the values. Uh, people weren't surprised to hear me as the mayor talk about the need for more education, lifelong learning, and health. But they were surprised to hear me talk about an even more compassionate city. And political consultants said, oh, don't talk about compassion. It'll make you appear weak. And politicians are supposed to appear strong. And I said, well, hold on a minute here. First off, I'm not a politician. I'm a public servant. And what I've found is it's more difficult for people to show compassion and kindness and love than it is to be a cynic from the couch. So we're going to talk about compassion every day. And this value of compassion has great roots in our city. This is Thomas Merton, the famed Trappist monk. He lived in the Abbey of Gethsemane, which is about 45 minutes outside of Louisville. And it was in 1958 where he had his famous epiphany at the corners of 4th and Walnut Street in downtown Louisville. And as a monk, he was prone to think about the big picture and how all this fits together. And in his epiphany, he was overwhelmed by this realization as he looked out over our hustling and bustling shopping district that everybody's connected. We are fundamentally one people. And if we could only see each other that way, there would be no more sorrow, no more hatred, no more war. What a beautiful value. And my friend, the Dalai Lama, happens to agree with this as well. <laughs> so in Louisville, we define compassion as the respect for all of our citizens. So we want their human potential to thrive, to flourish, or as Thomas Merton said, shine like the sun. So this all sounds good, right? The question is, how do you actualize the potential of people and then how do we harness that potential together to build a great American city? So we design the work within city government this way. We say there's three parts to the job. First, there's the daily work, what everybody does every day. The second is the continuous improvement work, how you can be the best at whatever you do in the world. And then the third part of the job is breakthrough, innovation. How do we get that whack on the side of the head? And the continuous improvement, Louisville is now the national model for methods that we have on how we can be the best in the world at how we deliver services. That's what government does. Louis Stat is our process where we collect and analyze data to identify problems and then solve problems using the best private sector tools like Six Sigma or Lean or project management at the same time. And then all of our departments, from the police 
to animal services present before me and my staff at least once a quarter to say how things are going according to our plan and how can we help them first off and foremost as well. In February, Governing Magazine in the city of Louisville produced and hosted the first ever government summit on performance and improvement and innovation. And you should be happy to know that 500 people attended, shared best practices, and then took those learnings back to their cities to improve all cities in America. Let me give you an example. Our EMS system, as they were collecting data on ambulance turnaround times in emergency rooms, recognized there was way too much variation. One crew would get in and out in 22 minutes, another one would be 54 minutes. So they collected the data, they pulled everybody together, and standardized a process that, in effect, resulted in two more ambulances on the street, resulting in about $2 million worth of savings. Cost to the citizens, zero. Value to the citizens, priceless. Okay. Now, so that's good for internal improvement. But then how do we engage citizens in external improvement or what I call social innovation? Here's a great public health example. Louisville's in the Ohio Valley, so the quality of our air sometimes gets a little stagnant. Our incidence of asthma is about two points above the national average. So we learned about a company called Propeller Health that was thinking about this, and our Office of Civic Innovation was thinking about it as well. So we said, what if we could enable an asthma inhaler with a GPS device so that when an asthma sufferer had an episode, we would know when and where it was taking place. So we have 600 people in this trial right now with a GPS-enabled asthma inhaler. So we literally know when and where people are using their inhalers. A heat map like this is produced, and then we overlay what the weather was on that day, what the traffic patterns were on that day, and then come up with mitigation techniques so that we can improve public health. So the citizens say, that's what government is supposed to do. It's supposed to make my life easier, improve my quality of life. And what happens as a result of that is that we build what I call social muscles, the belief in the community that when we work together, maybe when that inevitable tragedy takes place in our community, we will be better able to respond. I can tell you when you take a look at the balance sheet or the budget of a city, state, or federal government, there is no line item on there that says sense of community. But it's our most important asset. And without it, nothing can get done. So we're smart to intentionally build it. Our value of compassion that I've talked about. Our foremost event is the annual Mayor's Give a Day Week of Service. This past April, 160,000 volunteers participated in Give a Day. And it's through efforts like this that I would like to think that the love and kindness and compassion shows in our city. This is a picture of Lieutenant Aubrey Gregory and Asia Ford and her son. She was in our 10K that week, and she was having, having trouble finishing. Lieutenant Gregory had a choice. Say, ma'am, please move to the sidewalk so we can reopen the streets. But instead, he decided to walk up with her, finish the race, the final 2K, arm in arm. Now, one of my favorite Give a Day stories is the story of Gabby, a senior at Shawnee High School, who organized a food drive for her high school during Give a Day week. Little did we know that Gabby was in the process of potentially going homeless herself while she organized this. Check this out. Gabby, would you please come forward? So you show us that it's possible to juggle everything that life throws you and still come out on top. It's possible to become a strong and independent woman when the odds are against you. Now we know you've got some tough choices to make right now. So I know you have to make a decision between paying the deposit on your apartment, paying for your senior dues, and I know you want to go to senior prom too. So to make this easier on you, we have written you a $200 check to pay for your senior dues. We've also found you a selection of dresses that you can pick from for your senior prom. And of course, we have found a salon for you to do your hair, makeup, and nails the day of your prom. So 
please accept this gift. And all we ask for is one thing, okay? We want you to pay this forward someday when you can, all right? All right, let's pick out a dress for all you. Right, right here. <laughs> My name is Gabrielle, and the kindest thing that anybody has ever done for me yeah. is today. The man has presented me everything. Awesome. So I think the question for all of us is, what are our Gabby moments? Martin Luther King reminded us that life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing to help others? And this question's not a burden. It's an honor to be able to step up and help unleash the human potential that we see walking around us. And it's the highest calling of a city then to harness that potential so that we can do wonderful things for the rest of the world. So I'm optimistic. When we take a look at the spirit of cities like Louisville and other cities around the country that realize this is hard and difficult work, this journey we're on in America right now. But we realize that we're fundamentally interconnected. And the only way we're going to get through this to a better place is by doing it together. And I can tell you as mayor, I see time and time again, there is no problem too big that citizenship can't solve where we all put our personal biases behind us and we work for the betterment of our communities and our country and expect nothing in return. So I'm proud of the progress that we're making in Louisville on lifelong learning and health and compassion. I'm proud that we recognize it's hard work, but we're gonna keep doing it together. So I ask all of you all to help spread this brush fire of compassion so that we all indeed may walk hand in hand arm in arm, so that we may shine, like Thomas Merton said, like the sun. Thank you.